Hello, and welcome to today's session. My name is Jeff Ekstrom. I'm a cloud strategist with Red Hat. Today, I'll be talking about how Red Hat powers the open hybrid cloud. And so first, what we want to do is we want to dig into the Red Hat and Google relationship. So why Red Hat and Google together? And, and basically, Red Hat and Google can help you implement hybrid cloud and DevOps more effectively. We have a strong established partnership, which we'll get into in some detail. We've got a, a good alignment around both cloud in, in terms of a philosophy and as a discipline and around DevOps as a development and operational method. And then finally, we both have a commitment to open source. Um, we both contribute heavily to the Kubernetes project. We both can have uh, contribute heavily to other open source projects like Apache and Linux and, and so forth. And both of us lead uh, a number of working groups and interest groups within these open source communities. And we collaborate strongly on those as well. So a very strong commitment to open source. And then kind of illustrating that out over the years, you know, Google and Red Hat's relationship has grown, strengthened, and evolved numerous times over the year. And as you can see from this slide, really it's been about eight years now that Google and Red Hat have really collaborated around Google Cloud and around Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Kubernetes, and then finally OpenShift. We started our, our um, collaboration around Knative, so all of the workflows that make the DevOps within Kubernetes and OpenShift possible. Um, we started that collaboration in 2020. Um, 2019 at uh, Google Next, uh, Coles had a very strong um, keynote performance where they talked about some of the good things that came with collaboration between Red Hat and Google Cloud. Um, before that, um, we had joined each other's uh, cloud partnership programs. And, um, and before that, we had made our products available on Google Cloud, and we had begun to collaborate on the Kubernetes project. So kind of moving on, you know, the next thing we want to talk about is how can Red Hat um, and Google today help you meet your business demands with a number of hybrid cloud solutions? And, and really looking here, there are a number of ways that you can consume Red, Hat, um, Red Hat's technologies in conjunction with Google Cloud Platform. Of course, Red Hat Enterprise Linux runs right on top of Google Cloud, as well as Red Hat Enterprise Linux for SAP solution. Um, we have Red Hat OpenShift container. We have an installer and can, and can put OpenShift on top of Google Cloud Platform, as well as OpenShift dedicated which is a managed OpenShift offering that's available on top of Google Cloud. Um, we also have our middleware portfolio, which focuses more on data integration, uh, pro uh, business process automation management, and then around application building with um, runtimes and frameworks. And this as well can run on top of OpenShift, can run on top of RHEL, but all of it can run on top of Google Cloud. And then finally, Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, uh, if you're a Google Cloud user and you need to be able to very quickly and uniformly stand up your Google Cloud tenancy, Ansible is the way to go, as well as if you're using other software components such as a load balancer or a security monitoring tool or something along those lines, Ansible can play a very powerful role in lowering the amount of labor and the amount of time it takes to maintain these tools and then also ensuring consistency in the way that these tools are implemented and the way that um, vulnerabilities and issues are remediated within an enterprise. So what we really want to get into now is, well, how do you deliver business innovation faster in a hybrid world? I've got workloads here, I've got workloads there, I've got them on bare metal, I've got them in the public cloud, I've got them at the edge, I've got them inside my uh, legacy data center, and how can I scale and deliver innovation faster with my workloads living all over the place? And really, the key to that is, is, it, is it's going to start with architecture. It's going to start with a stable platform that's going to deliver that's going to deliver those results no matter where you want to do them. And really, an open hybrid cloud strategy can help, right? With the foundation of the operating system of Linux and then building Kubernetes on top of that, we can scale, we can scale workloads both in the cloud, in the data center, and on the edge. And we can deliver a number of different workloads uh, on top of that platform. So our traditional end-tier applications, uh, cloud-native microservices, uh, edge IoT analytics that would also use uh, artificial intelligence machine learning, and then finally a number of third-party uh, software vendor packaged applications that kind of work in conjunction with all these sorts of things. So no matter the workload and no matter where it needs to live, a solid foundation of both Linux, Kubernetes, and then finally OpenShift are going to be the components that deliver that stable and predictable experience. So quickly, we'll talk about Red Hat Enterprise Linux and how it provides the common foundation across infrastructure environments. 
And as you can see here, right, it lives very well within Google Cloud, other public clouds if you have a if you have a multi-cloud, uh, as well as all of the other um, hardware infrastructure types. Um, as you standardize on Linux, you'll find that both your Kubernetes environment will become more stable as well as the applications that run directly on Linux. So no matter the purpose of deploying Linux just in general, Linux is gonna be st um, step one to having that consistent hybrid cloud experience. It's also important to note uh, over on the left-hand side within Red Hat that we have our uh, management tools that go along with Linux. So this is a key differentiator for Red Hat. As, as you use this stable environment and as you deploy Linux in all of these different scenarios and landscapes, Insights allows you to visualize and track what you have deployed and where, how it's being utilized, and what your vulnerabilities look like. And then smart management enables you to efficiently and effectively deploy updates and manage the overall configuration of your environment. So a hybrid environment can get very complex. Linux can provide a stable foundation. And then Red Hat's suite of management tools can lower the complexity and the overall operational burden of having a complex hybrid cloud development. And, and just kind of getting into that some more, Linux is the innovation engine for open hybrid cloud. As I've, as I've nailed a few times, um, it delivers that consistency across clouds, across data centers, across the edge. Um, it is the foundation for Kubernetes, but it's also the foundation for running standalone container workloads as well. And those can be done on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as just your simple development environments, being able to take your workloads and build them into a containerized fashion. Uh, in terms of Linux, um, especially Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right, we've got uh, SC Linux or Security Enhanced Linux turned on by um, default in a lot of environments. And what RHEL can really do for you is to help you have a, um, a security focus to safeguard your system against potential threats and to be able to quickly keep pace with unknown vulnerabilities. And then finally, Red Hat Enterprise Linux lends itself very well to automation. And as I touched on before, our relationship between Linux Kubernetes and Ansible lends itself very well to automating a lot of the key IT tasks and um, issues that need to be resolved within an environment. What we take is now that, now that we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux as the foundation of our hybrid cloud strategy, the next thing that we wanna talk about is having um, Kubernetes, more specifically OpenShift, stood up on top of Linux because really containers start with Linux. Linux and Kubernetes are engineered together and the way that Red Hat delivers Kubernetes is to deliver it as a fully developed application development platform that runs on top of Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and is engineered in conjunction with the engineering of the Linux kernel. Some of the things that OpenShift provides that I would say go above and beyond what a typical Kubernetes experience would look like are things like self-service automation, a pretty well-developed um, catalog of container uh, images that would include Red Hat's middleware portfolio, uh, our operator frameworks that we work with with our third-party ISV community, as well as a number of uh, open source frameworks, uh, things such as Apache and Tomcat and MariaDB and MySQL and, and, and things of that nature. But as you can see from kind of looking around here, OpenShift is much more than just a plain vanilla Kubernetes experience. It is a fully it is a fully baked application development platform, and it really helps developers to hit the ground running and to hit it fast. And as you can see here, we kind of do a good job of of bringing all that together and kind of showing why, right? Why do why are developers successful with OpenShift? It's because of the tooling. It's because of our CI/CD workflows that we build off the K Native project. It's about the fact that. Um, OpenShift can abstract away the underlying um, infrastructure. And so the developer's not having to worry about what the lab environment looks like and where I'm gonna provision this or that. The developer can just focus on going into an environment, checking in their code, promoting it to build, and going through the standard processes. They don't have to waste cycles worrying about things that are outside of their core competency. They can spend their time building, testing, and promoting code within your enterprise, ultimately leading to faster um, time to market and, and to, better app, to better software quality as you're able to iterate more times. And talking about this a little bit further, you know, with Red Hat OpenShift, we can automate our app delivery with continuous delivery, right? So one of the things that we pride ourselves on is to be able to go from idea to product in a very small amount of time. 
and what are some of the key things that underpin that build, test, and deploy strategy that takes us from idea to product, the idea of self-service provisioning, consistent environments, and automated builds and deployments, um, predefined CI/CD pipelines, configuration management between um, the, under, the internal code bases within OpenShift and within the internal lab environments that are, um, that are configured within OpenShift, and then finally, having a, a wide variety of application logs and metrics to be able to monitor the performance of your application, the performance of the infrastructure, security concerns, all of those sorts of things. But again, the idea here is that through all of the wiring that is in place with an OpenShift, a developer is able to focus more on building their code and serving themselves and less on all of the minutia of working within an IT environment. So it's really a, a force multiplier for a developer. And then the next thing we want to talk about with Red Hat running on top of Google Cloud is our relationship with SAP, right? Um, we can run SAP on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, we can run SAP HANA on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and we have different versions for that. We can develop once, deploy anywhere. We can automate the installation across platforms. Um, we can migrate with reduced effort. And, and really, we can integrate our applications across the multi-cloud. And then kind of looking at this in a little bit more detail, we really wanted to just kind of demonstrate today is that there are a number of options and there's a complete and exhaustive tool set to enable you with your SAP journey into the cloud, right? We've got the foundations with both Linux and OpenShift that can live in your data center, that can live in your private cloud, and that can live up in Google Cloud. Um, we've got a number of integration and, and modernization um, portfolios that can again help with that ecosystem of things that live around SAP, so all of the other data sources that need to be integrated in. And then we also have automation, which really is a force multiplier for the operational burden of building, maintaining, and updating your SAP environment. So really with Red Hat, as an SAP customer, especially one that's in the cloud, Red Hat has all of the different tools to both serve as a solid found, uh, foundation and platform for your SAP workloads, but then the other tooling to live around SAP in the ether to help with the other tasks that come along with running complex workloads and complex architectures. And we would also like to encourage you to visit our event microsite for uh, Google Cloud Next. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway there, so I would encourage you to go check it out, look through the site, and I'd like to thank everyone for their time, and, uh, and that's it.